Okay, let's start with working example one. So what we're doing today, if you look on page 205, it gives you tips for proving identities, because that's what we have to do now. So if you look in the tips, first tip is this. It's easier to simplify a complicated expression than to make a simple expression more complicated. So start with the, move, the more complicated side of the identity. I stated that to you yesterday. Look at the one that's more complicated and start with it. Use known identities to make substitutions. If a quadratic is present, I stated this to you yesterday, very boldly, consider the Pythagorean identity first. So if there is squared values, consider the Pythagorean identity sine squared x plus co squared x equals 1. Look at it and see if that's a part of it. Rewrite the expression using sine and cos. Sometimes when they're simplified with just using sine and cos, it makes it a lot easier. Multiply the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate of the expression. I'll explain that when we come to it. And factor to simplify expressions. So we are also going to factor some of this stuff. All right? There are also a list of uh, ways in which I throw tips to you. What to look for in an identity on how to solve it. So, right now what I need you to do is grab some paper that is not in your book. Or you could follow through. I shouldn't say that. You could try and follow through in your book, in the solution for 206. We are going to prove an identity. We are not going to prove them numerically. We are just going to prove them algebraically. So, the first identity is this. 1 minus co squared x. is equal to sine x, cos x, and x. So the first thing I do, write out my equation and draw a line. You need to follow with me. Are you already there? Yeah. Okay, so you are you okay? Yes. Yeah. Alright, good. Have you done this before? Or? Yeah, you have? Okay, good. Okay. So, here's the rare one. Well, no, actually it's not. I'm not going to do it. I was going to work both sides, but I'm not. I'm going to take the more complicated side, which is the right side of this. So that's tip number one. Tip number two is also, uh, you know what, once you get it there, maybe change the sine and cos. So let's change tan then. Sine x, cos x, sine x over cos x. Right? Is that correct? Okay. What am I left with? Sine squared x. Is that equal to that? Not the way it's written, but is it equal to that? Yes, it is. Sine squared x, if you take Pythagorean's identity, the one that they said you must use, if you take it, and you isolate your sine squared x, what are you going to be left with? One minus cos squared x. That's right. Those left hand side. So, again, I would put that in brackets because I changed it to this using my identity. Yes. What if, can you put like sine squared of x equals sine squared of x on that side? Like, say, one take like sine squared of x and take the. Uh, you cannot work both sides of this. You never work from one side to the other, ever. Never, ever, ever. Do not do that. Okay. So we you have to work side. one side only. Okay. okay, now I could have simplified this, and I could have changed this to this as well. I could change it like that, and then it would be done right there. But that's okay. But you can't take from one side and move to the other. No, that's what I meant, like... Can I move it down to sine squared x? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, 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 sir. yes, right here. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Jeffy. Okay. But just don't go from one side. Yeah, no. So when you did the, um, 
the sine squared x becomes the one subtract cos squared x? You just did that first equation, you just rearranged it, right? Yeah. So what does the textbook want us to do on the left side? Uh, change. Oh, put a value in. Oh, okay. They want you to put like uh, pi over 4 in yeah, okay. and prove it. I don't want to do that. I yeah. just want to work with the algebra part. Okay. okay, any other questions for this? Any of you following? Okay. okay, let's try working example two. One plus cos 2x over sine 2x. Okay? And then it says, oh, equal to cotan x. All right. So, the first thing that you notice is what? <coughs> the left side is more complicated. What else? What else? First thing that you should notice is the angles. Are they the same on the left and the right? No, the left's twice the right. So I need to have them all changed to a single angle identity. Okay? So let's start with sine 2x. Let's change it so it's a single angle. So what do I change it to? 2 sine equals 8. 2 sine x cos x. Okay, so that's the first step right there. All right? You also notice that cotan x is just one singular trig identity, right? So, therefore, I want to somehow, again, how many choices do I have for cos 2x? Three. I have a choice of three of them, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I want to do the one in which it has the negative one on it. Because then when the ones cancel, then I'll be left with just a trig ratio. So I go one plus. So which one of those has the one as a negative? Two cos squared x. Two cos squared x. Subtract one. Good. Does everybody notice that? Okay. So the reason I did that is to get rid of the one in front here. So when I get rid of my brackets, what am I left with? 2 cos squared x, 2 sine x cos x, just like that. Right? 1 subtract 1 is 0. Okay? Questions? Let's cancel. 2's cancel. That cancels. What am I left with? Cos x over sine x, which is what? Cotan. Okay. <coughs> your right hand side. How many identities did I use? How many? Two. How can I identify my identities? notice when I do my substitutions. Brackets. Put brackets. That's important for us to do. The reason I want to put brackets on my identities is because when we have to mark these things as exam papers, we are looking for very specific things and the identities are part of it. Like this would be a four mark question, let's say. So I need to see you substitute both of those. There's a mark each. Simplify it. Might be a three mark question. And then I'm done. Okay. Is your little cotan changing thing count as an identity, or is that just a simple thing? Oh yeah, this actually that would be cos over sine x would be cotan x. That'd be the third mark. Oh, okay. Yeah. What if it does this before? How do you keep that? If if say that was just tan, and then that's how you equal cotan. It has to equal it. It has to. Has to. Okay. If it doesn't, then you've made an error. Okay. Okay, we're gonna do one more. 
All right, so this gets into some of the things I want you to look for, okay? So here's what I want you to make note. Go back to the page 205, the tips, and at the bottom I want you to do this. Okay, I want you to write this down. Common denominator. Common denominator, factor, difference of squares, split fractions, and identities. All of these are just aids to help you what look at the start of the question. And when you're stuck, you say, okay, do I have two fractions here? Maybe I need a common denominator. Right? Maybe I have a fraction, I have a value on top, uh, a term on top, like A plus B over B. Maybe it makes more sense to split it up to A over B plus B over B. That's split fractions. Factoring and difference of squares are huge. You'll see this all the time. Since grade 10, I've been telling you difference of squares, difference of squares, difference of squares. I've been leading you up to this moment right here, where you have to do these and recognize difference of squares. And in fact, the next question we're going to do We'll talk about it. Okay? So let's go to page 207. side is obviously the left side. And I'm not really sure what to do to start with. So let's have a look at it. And what do you notice? I have two fractions, right? So what do you usually, what have you always done anytime you've had a couple fractions? Get a common denominator. So what's the common denominator here? Very good. One plus sine theta, one subtract sine theta, okay? So that's going to go on the bottom here. Okay, so what do I have to multiply that, multiply that guy by? One plus sine theta. Just that, right? Because I'm trying to get them all over, all over this. And then this one I have to multiply by what? Perfect. Okay, so all I've done is just get a common denominator here. So far, so good. All right, now. So here's what I have. Multiply through cos theta plus cos theta sine theta plus cos theta minus cos theta sine theta. Just multiply through your brackets. Anybody following what I'm doing so far? What is the bottom? Cos Yeah, okay, not yet. If I multiply the bottom, what am I going to end up with? Well done, Jake. Yeah, that's important too. Okay? Alright, can we simplify the top here? 
Okay, so I got cos theta plus cos theta, which is what? Cos theta, right? What's cos sine, cos theta, sine theta, subtract cos sine, cos theta, sine theta? Zero. It's zero. So those cancel, right? So on top, I'm left with two cos theta. Notice over here, I have just a cos theta. Is there any way I can make that a cos theta? What is 1 minus sine squared theta? Cos squared theta. Okay. What am I left with? Okay. The one major was the common denominator at the start. You can do the common denominator at the start, off and running, off and running. And so that's the hard part. All of these questions are going to be difficult at the start of them to figure out how to begin them. So those list of five things that I gave you, that's to help you start these out. Okay? Any so questions about this right now? All of these are gonna, questions are going to ask us to show how they're the same, like they're not ever going to not equal each other. That's the question she just asked a minute and a half. Yeah, ago. I know, and you said yeah, but I was So just, then why are you asking me again? Because I thought maybe I didn't hear it all. Because I kind of caught halfway on. Like, making sure. Let's see. Mother love a duck, Lexi. Mother love a duck. <laughs> Alright, let's look at one more, and then I've given you enough, and you've got enough to get through tomorrow. Coast. 4x minus sine 4x to the 4th x is equal to cos of 2x. Alright, so you do have your choice here. I'm going to start with the left side and work on the left side. I'm not going to lie to you, 90% of these questions I work only left side. I rarely use the right side. Um, I don't know if it's intentional that they put the most complicated part on the left side most of the time, but I would say it does. Okay? So here's what I have. Cos to the 4th x minus sine of the 4th x. i got to do something. So i got to end up with a 2x here. What do you notice about that? What do you think you should do there? Difference of squares. Difference of squares. Jeffrey, that's fantastic. Okay? So, difference of squares says... Cos squared x minus sine squared x, right? Times cos squared x add sine squared x. Agreed? Mm -hmm. Yeah? What's the first thing that jumps out at you? That is? Want something else to jump out at you? What's the most obvious thing? One. Yes. What is cos squared x at sine squared x? One. One. That you want to have jump off the page at you. Remember what I said. You're going to use that lots. So when it says cos squared x plus sine squared x, it's one. So this is one. So how do I get this to be a cos 2x? Well, look at your identity sheet. Is this one of the three that changes it? Two-step question. Two-step question. Three, or two, sorry, two identities being used, right? Two identities. This one and this one. Those are the two. And that was it. Simple question, I guess, right? But you have to be able to recognize the difference of squares to make it easy. Working on this side would have been much more difficult to do it. Okay? All right. 
That's all I want to take for your time today. Six three. You have the rest of class to work. So by Monday, you should be on. You need to be on 6-3 on Monday for class. We will wrap up 6-3 on Monday. It should be the end of 6. There's a 6-4. Lovely. Okay. So we'll do 6-4 as well. Are we going at a pretty good pace here? Like, mm -hmm.